there's been two organizations that have always been there for Israel, and we in turn at Beth Yashurn have always tried to help these organizations, and that is APAC and Israel Bonds. So first to tell us about the latest on APAC and what APAC is doing to help our brothers and sisters in Israel, it's my pleasure to call upon our Southwest Regional Director, Jerry Greenspan. Good morning, Lashana Tova, Rabbi Strauss, and President Lori Herzog. Thank you for inviting me back to speak this morning. And many thanks, first of all, are due to this congregation for hosting the community's beautiful one-year remembrance program earlier in the week. It's easy to say that 10-7 will never be forgotten, but there were a lot of dates that shook us this past year. April 13th, when Iran first, for the first time, ever directly fired at the State of Israel. April 17th marked the beginning of the Columbia campus protests. The July 19th drone attack from Yemen that struck in Tel Aviv had folks on edge, and the largest ballistic missile attack in history, period, struck Israel just 11 days ago on October 1st. Of course, every day is one in which 101 hostages remain in Gaza. Israeli parents are terrified that their doorbell may ring to the news that their children have fallen in battle, and much like this morning, red alert sounds all across the state of Israel. Each of these days has frayed our nerves time and time again. We've been saddened, heartbroken, angry. But once again, this community stood up. Collectively, the American Jewish community sent countless resources to Israel. As you heard, we visited and volunteered, fed and fought, literally fought, on behalf of the state of Israel. Here at home, we wrote letters, we educated our neighbors, both Jewish and not Jewish. We made calls and leveraged our businesses, leveraged our relationships, and made our voice clear. It's because of this work that we can also remember April 23rd, the second night of Passover, the day our United States Congress passed $14.3 billion of security assistance to Israel. It's because of, the, it's because of this work that on May 7th, June 25th, and August 6th, just to name a few, seemingly random days on the calendar that the pro-Israel community won battles here in this country, helping to secure the election of thoughtful leaders, both Democratic and Republican, and the defeat of some of the most emboldened anti-Israel members of Congress we've ever seen. These victories are reminders of our potential impact. They promote reason and rationality. They help the United States, first and foremost, maintaining and strengthening our role as a force for good in the world. And yes, by direct extension, they help protect the state of Israel. The journalist Brett Stevens wrote a few years ago that the relationship between the Jewish people and power is complicated to say the least. Speaking largely about individuals in power, Stevens accurately notes we're terrified by its absence, by power's absence, uneasy in its possession, and conflicted about its use. In the same essay, Brett Stevens notes that the innocence by way of powerlessness comes at a historically heavy price for the Jewish people. And here he's referring more to collective power. But what I would submit is that in the last 12 months, power held by a collective, by a community, by this community, should be and must be held grown and used for good without apology and perhaps without atonement. The ethical manifestation of Jewish power, as a mentor of mine says, is one of the only things or perhaps the only thing post October 7th that stands between us and exponentially more pain, more grief, and more anguish. I wish I could tell you that the battle was over, but you and I know better. You've seen the attacks continue from seven fronts on Israel's borders, and it continues here in this country, from the UN to extremist ideologies, from college campuses to the campaign trail. The Iron Lady of England of the United Kingdom, Margaret Thatcher, said, you might have to fight a fight more than once to win it. I agree, and I, I don't believe that the emergency campaign for Israel will ever end. In 5784, you dug deep, you stepped out of your comfort zones, and you made a difference. You did it because you had to, because you felt as though there was no other choice but to get involved. 
However you went about your patriotism, your Zionism, your generosity, I have two simple messages to close on. The first is that the work must absolutely continue. In 57, 85, 86, and every year ahead that you wish to see the Jewish homeland remain a reality. My other message, my main message this morning, is just very simply, thank you. L'shanat tovah and gemar chatimat tovah.